All right, Ephesians chapter 2. We're, uh, for those of us who are uh, watching on the videos, we are outside, as you probably figured, and uh, a beautiful day in Maryland, Kevin Snowden's house. And uh, so we appreciate the hospitality, and we're going to look forward to some uh, wonderful things as we explore God's great truths. I've been working on a series, and I'm just going to continue it today. Uh, we didn't start it here at our meetings up in the D.C. Baltimore area. I actually started this uh, series in Pittsburgh and uh, did, a, did a few sessions there. And then we did, did another, uh, continued the series at the airport in Johnstown. And I'll just continue them here, uh, a study of rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. It's important when we approach the scriptures that we just don't start in Genesis and read all the way through and pick some of our favorite things to believe. Uh, that's uh, not the approach to scriptures that God would have us do. Paul taught us that uh, we were to be uh, diligent students of the word, uh, to be approved of God by, by rightly dividing the word of truth. And it's finding out what God has to say to us, what applies to us today. And uh, Miles Coverdale, who was... Uh, he produced the first English version of the Bible in 1535. And here's what he wrote in the prelogue to the reader in front of his Bible. And uh, this is a great truth. He said, it shall greatly help you to understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If you not only mark what is spoken, but of whom, with what words, at what time, where, and to what intent, with what circumstances, considering what goes before and what follows after. In other words, we need to, we need to take an intelligent approach to the scriptures. Uh, we have people who have a sincere heart, and they're doing all kinds of things that appear to be based on the scriptures. And uh, we could do a lot of things today. We could build an ark and try to go collect two of every kind of animal you know, and get it in the ark. And that is definitely a scriptural thing. But it's not a dispensational thing. It's not rightly divine the word of truth. That's not what God's doing today. And somebody say, well, it's in the Bible. But just because it's in the Bible doesn't mean that that's what we're supposed to be doing. So this, so what we did in this series, and if you've not watched it, you can start from the beginning, but we just start in Genesis and we're working our way through to get a grasp of what, what is God doing? What is his plan? Who is he talking to? And uh, we're just following that through. And in our, our last session, you know, we, we got through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We got through the book of Acts. And now we're going to be considering uh, the epistles. And this is just, a, as I said, just a, a, another lesson in the series. But we're going to do it by looking at a basic timeline of uh, right division. And as with any timeline, it just has three basic elements. We have the past, we have the present, and we have the future. And the fact is, we're not the only people that, that have ever been God's people. You know, we're just God's people now. And so we don't want to be arrogant as we approach the scriptures. You know, some people say, all, all the scriptures for me. You know, all, every promise in the book is mine. Maybe you heard people say that. Well, that's not really true. You know, God, God promised uh, Abraham he was going to have a child, you know, when he was past having children. Yes. Well, that's not my promise. Well, at least I hope it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but so you've got to you've got to realize that people have lived before us and God gave them scriptures and God had some stuff to say to them. And there's going to be people who live after us and God's got some scripture for them and he's told them some stuff and we need to find out where we fit into uh, God's program. Now, what we have, when we come to the latter ministry of Paul, Paul had a twofold ministry. The first part of his ministry was he was a, uh, a priest to the Gentiles. He says so when he wrote the book of Romans, that he had a ministry of being a priest to the Gentiles. And then in his latter ministry, after he got arrived in Rome, God revealed to him a new revelation that he talks about the secret administration. Come come right on in, sisters, and join us. Well, I say in, 
come right on out. Because <laughs> we're, we're the outsiders. Outside, yeah. And today we're outside. Yeah. So Paul teaches that you and I currently live in the secret administration. Yeah. And in writing these epistles of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, and, and even the personal letter of Philemon, uh, Paul talks in Ephesians and Colossians, he uses the word now mm -hmm. to represent the present. Now. So there's some certain things that are true now. These things that are true now weren't things that were true in the past. And they aren't going to be true in the future. Yes. But they're true now. Some current information about what God's doing today. Mm -hmm. And so what, what distinguishes the difference between the past and the future from the now is that Paul tells us something very specific took place and that there was a middle wall. There was a wall that stood between Jew and Gentile between the nation Israel and all the other nations, between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And as long as that wall was up, there was a distinction in people and classes and the way God dealt with man. But Paul tells us in the secret administration that this wall, God brought this wall down. So that all distinction in mankind and God's dealing with mankind has changed in the period called now. So this middle wall is down. Yes. The King James Bible calls it the middle wall of partition. It partitioned a group of people off from the rest of the world. And they were distinct. The, the concordant version calls it the central wall of the barrier. This wall was a barrier to anyone who was on the wrong side of it. And I'll tell you, I'll be safe to say, that all our ancestors were on the wrong side of that wall. We were, we were outside. We were not a part of the covenants of God. We were not, Israel, uh, Christ was not our Messiah. And these were things that God had for Israel. Right. Now, during the secret administration, Paul says that we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the celestials. So the inheritance change, the location of the inheritance change, our calling change, not only did the administration change, but the ministers of the, of the administration change. And so that now we have completeness in Christ, and there are no blessings that we have to attain. We already have them. He blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Under the old economy, even Israel, all the things that God gave to Israel, they were all based on a principle called if, then. God would tell Israel, if you'll do this stuff, mm -hmm. then I'll do this stuff. Mm -hmm. We call that the principle of the law. You do what I say, you perform, you execute, I will do what I say. And now, it's all been done. It was all done prior. And we are complete in Jesus Christ. So we live in an age when all the things of the past that were emphasized by this middle wall, all those things in the past have been removed. So that we live in an age when there is no water baptism, no physical circumcision, no uh, divinely recognized nations, no religious feasts or suppers, no signs or wonders, no miraculous healing, no casting out of demons or snake handling, no raising the dead, no tongues, no visions, no Mosaic law observed, no vows, no sacrifices, no ordinances, no temple or priesthood, wow. no confession of sins, no prophecies being fulfilled, no selling <laughs> of personal possessions so that we'd have all things in common, no neglecting of the family, no apostles, no prophets, no bishops, no pastors, no officers, no gifts, no local Wait. assemblies. Right. These, all these things, all these things that were true when the middle wall is up, we now live in perfect perfection. We are completing Christ. There's nothing I need to add to that. I don't need a ritual. I don't need a ceremony. I don't need anything to do. I already got it all. It all belongs to us. And this is what we're looking for. Now, 
as we would read through uh, sec, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, Paul uses words in reference to the past, the present, and the future. As we've already noted, he uses the word now to emphasize what God is doing in the secret administration. And then, of course, just depending on what translation you use, is, is how it shows up him uh, mentioning the past. Uh, for instance, the King James says, time past. Well, that, that's pretty easy to see in the past. So a few times in this passage, Paul describes the way things were in the past. King James says, time past. The, uh, the concordant uses actually two different ways to describe it. It says once. Once these things were true. Once this happened. Once. You know, so if I tell you, you know, once I went fishing. Well, you know I'm not fishing now. Okay, so we know it's in the past. It's a past tense thing. Another way that it uses is the, the concordance says that era. Referring to the past. And then to refer to the, the future in uh, Ephesians, uh, in the King James, it translates it uh, ages to come. So we know it's in the future. So Paul is describing, and by the way, the concordant writes there, oncoming. Oncoming ages, or eons. So in Ephesians chapter 2, as we th read through, and Paul is revealing a secret administration, he keeps contrasting now he contrasts it with the past, and he contrasts it with something God's going to do in the future. Let's just notice uh, quickly a couple of those. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and look in verse 2. Uh, now, I'm just reading now uh, out of the uh, 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 King James uh, because of its familiarity. But he says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, by the way, he's not talking about your particular past and my particular past. He's talking about our past as a group of people. He's talking about our ancestries. And when we trace our ancestries, we don't trace them to Abraham. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking here. You know what God's doing today? He's doing it. He's, he is building a body of people that has no bearing on who where your ancestors were. Right. Thank God for that. We, 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 we'll accept that, won't we? And then he says in, in the very next verse, among whom you also had our conversation in times past. And then notice in verse 11, he says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. That's called the wall was up. Jew, Gentile. There's no Jews and Gentiles today. See, that wall is down. Now notice the future. The future is in verse 7. He says that in the ages to come, or the oncoming eons, he might show the exceeding riches. So there's some things, there's some things God did in the past, and he's not doing them now, mm -hmm. and he's not going to do those particular things that way in the future. And there's some things in the future that God's going to do that he's not doing right now and that he didn't do in the past. And so this is very, this is a, such a simple concept to understand. So we just need to understand what this now is all about. And this now is all about that there's a secret administration. Or as some translations would say, that it was a mystery, uh, a, a dispensation, yeah. and a mystery. Now what is... I like the word administration. Dispensation is fine too, but we understand what a, what an administration is, especially we let, we're we're up here close to the uh, in the D.C. area, and so there's an administration up in Washington, and it, it represents the way things are being done and carried out, mm -hmm. and we have an administration today in our government, and before the current administration there was another one, and these two administrations don't look the same, mm -hmm. do they? They're they're different. And the one before that was different. And God's had different administrations, and he's had different people in charge of those administrations. And the administration today, it's, it's very... Um, hmm. It's very feature is that it's a, it was a secret. And Paul makes it very clear that no one ever knew about this administration before. So here's what you can do. You can start in Genesis, and you can read in Genesis all the way to the book of Ephesians, and you will never have a clue 
that this administration was going to happen. God kept it secret. Mm -hmm. He, he, God in the beginning made this big plan for all the ages. And he took out a part of that and he hid it. And then he went about carrying out all the other stuff he was doing. And then when the, Paul the Apostle got to the Roman prison at the very end of Acts, after Israel had been set aside and declared not to be God's people today, then God opened up this secret administration. Now, so present, past, present, future. Now we're going to try to sum this up f fairly quickly here. But So what do we have here? It's not until you get to the book of Ephesians that Paul reveals this secret administration. In fact, you can read all his early epistles and there's no hint to that. Now, don't be confused because you read the word mystery in Paul's early epistles. In fact, you can read the mystery in, in the Gospels, right? The, 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 the secrets of the kingdom. God's always had secrets that he held. He's always had little information that he never told anyone about. But he never had a whole administration, a whole time period that the entire, every aspect, its hope, its people, its destiny, its calling, its, its uh, instructions, its inheritance, all of these things, they were all a secret. And he starts to talk about them in the book of Ephesians. Now Ephesians has a companion book, Colossians. And you just really have to sit down one evening. You read through Ephesians, read through Colossians. They, they, they're, all, they're mirrors mm -hmm. of each other. Mm -hmm. you know. And then there's two other epistles that he wrote during that time period. He wrote uh, Philippians. And then, of course, he wrote the, the, the per, personal epistle of, uh, of uh, Philemon. Uh, so anyway, these, these, are, these are epistles that, that were written during this secret administration. Now, prior to that, well, what, what parts of the scriptures came before Paul revealed the secret administration. Well, we got the Old Testament. We have the Old Testament prophets. And of course, we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yes. And you know what? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John aren't about you or I. It's about, it's about God's dealing with the nation of Israel. In fact, when he, called, when he called the twelve, he forbid them to go to the Gentiles. That, that's our ancestors. Jesus said, don't go talk to, don't go, go talk to Kevin's ancestors. Don't go talk to Clyde. Don't talk to them. Because I'm going, I'm going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Very important that we understand that. Paul clear makes makes in case you missed it while you were reading uh, uh, the Gospels, that you weren't involved in that. When you get when you get to Romans chapter 15, Paul says that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. circumcision. Oh, wait a minute, we're the uncircumcision. Right. And he was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the promises. Mm -hmm made to the fathers. fathers, the fathers of who? The fathers of Abra Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Israel, Israel, that's not us. So we got the Old Testament prophets, time passed. We got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that was once upon a time, that was in the past. And then of course we got the book of Acts. Acts is really, Acts is really Luke part two. Because Luke's saying, I'm gonna continue the things I was writing. And now it's about the apostles carrying on the ministry of the Messiah, proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah. Paul was involved in that. Paul was involved in this period, but he also just explains to us in Romans chapter 15 that not only was Jesus Christ a minister of the circumcision, but he says that I've been given to be a priest to the Gentiles. So during the Acts period, he's a priest to the Gentiles. And because he's an apostle, and a priest to the Gentiles, he had all the signs of the apostle. He did all the same signs the apostle did. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 he healed and he raised the dead and he did mighty wonders and miracles. He observed the law, he made vows, he made sacrifices, he circumcised. Paul did in the book of Acts. Some people would have us believe that in the middle of the book of Acts a great change took place. But the, the, the great change took place at the end of the book of Acts when the secret administration was revealed in uh, uh, the book of Ephesians. Now, I'm going to really stress that to you. We have a lot of folks that I've noticed, and even preachers, yeah. that in the last few years have abandoned Paul's distinct ministry. And I'll tell you why I think they've done it. I think they've done it because we've been, we have failed to clearly, rightly divide the word of truth. Yes. 
And if you include all of Paul's epistles as being the secret administration and the mystery, and distinct from Peter, James, and John and the ministry of Israel, and then you've got Peter, and you, but then, excuse me, then you've got Paul water baptizing, observing the Lord's Supper, doing signs and wonders and miracles, uh, having tongues, and all the same stuff. You know, people begin to say, you know what? This is just the same. And they're right. It's just the same all the way through the end of the book of Acts. In fact, we could, you know, we could ask Paul. Paul, were you teaching something different during the Acts period? <laughs> Yes. You know what you know what Paul's answer was in the book of Acts when they were questioning what he was teaching? He said, I teach none other things, none other things than that which was spoken by the law and the prophets. Yes. None other things. Was that always true of Paul? No, it wasn't. The secret administration. But that comes later. That comes at the end of the book of Acts. And then of course in the future, uh, and in the ages to come, you know, we have we have the books in the future. We have Hebrews and James. And we got the books of Peter, and we got the books of John, and we got Jude and Revelation. And like I told you before, God's, a, God's always had a people. He had a people in the past, Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts. He has a people in the future. And they have books too to go by. Hebrews, James, Peter, John, Jude, the Revelation. All about the future. Now, if you go out here, let me tell you. All the book, all the whole Bible is profitable. Right. And it's a great blessing to study the whole Bible. Yes. But you got to be careful when you're reading that you know if it was written directly to you or not. Mm -hmm. For instance, at our house, well, we have, we have three houses in a row uh, in Wimber. And uh, there's 14 people that live in those three houses. And uh, there's a lot of mail comes to these three houses. And it has different people's names on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Some of them has my name on it. Some of the mail comes has Nathan's name on it. Mm -hmm. Some of the mail comes has Stephen's name on it. Have different names on these letters. Right. And if I if I go get the mail from the mailman and I don't pay attention to whose name it's addressed to, and I just start opening the mail and reading all the mail and assuming it's mine, I'm gonna pay bills that aren't mine. I'm gonna cash checks or uh -oh. try to. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Now that paying that bill, you know, the other family member will say, "Thank you." Yeah. <laughs> but I go down to the bank try to cash Stevens check. Right. Well, we might run into a little trouble. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna run into trouble if you try to cash checks from the Bible that aren't uh, your promises. Yes. And you can spend your whole lifetime and. Uh, and it can destroy your life. In fact, Peter said about Paul's epistles that, that he wrote things that were hard to understand that those that were unlearned, people who didn't study, they were unlearned, they wrestled his scriptures to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. The Bible will actually destroy you if you don't find out what mail is yours. Now, does that mean that if Nathan gets a piece of mail, I couldn't enjoy it? Yeah, somebody might write him a letter and tell him some great stuff, and he said, Dad, you got to read this. And I read it and say, oh, this is awesome. But the whole time I'm reading it, I know that wasn't written to me. Right. It was written to Nathan. So can I get benefit? Yes, no question. But I always have to remember it was written to Nathan, and it wasn't written to me. Same thing when you know Scripture. You can read all back here you want. Just always remember who it was written to, what it was about. Yes. You can read out here, yes. And I'll tell you, later, later today, if I get another slot, uh, if not, then when, whenever I pick up this series again, we're going to look at specific passages in here yes. that can destroy your life. Mm -hmm. Things that were said, and they do destroy people's lives. Yes. You know, and uh, let me just give you a good example. And the, you know, uh, Mark, the end of Mark, there's a commission, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. Not might, mm -hmm. not it's a good chance, mm -hmm. not if you're diligent. These signs shall follow them that believe. And yes. there's a whole list of things, isn't there? Yes. And one of them is you pick up deadly serpents and, and you're not going to be hurt. Yes. Well, you go give that a good shot for a while and see how deadly bad doctrine can be if you're not paying attention to who, who is speaking, to who they're speaking to, and what the context of the matter is. Right. So we have this very important principle of, of right division. So there's stuff back here, yes, that we can enjoy and we can learn from and will help us 
help us understand God's overall plan. We have stuff out in the future so we know what God's doing uh, in the future. But right here, and specifically the twin epistles of, of uh, Philippians and Colossians, we learn the secret administration, and God is teaching us what He's doing now. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a, just a glorious truth. So later, we'll... Uh, We'll spend some time, uh, perhaps, if we have a little. We're just we're seeing how the day goes, and uh, but if if uh, well, regardless whether it's here or where it is, the next time I pick up on the right division, we're going to start the book of Hebrews, and we're going to see who it was written to. We're going to see what the conditions of it were, and we're going to look at specific instructions uh, and so forth, and see how they don't belong uh, to those of us who are members of the body of Christ during the secret administration. All right, excellent. Okay.